Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play Tugio King Colossus. In the first episode, we started the game, and we went to the Southwest Cave to get the old man's sword back from the Thief of Thieves, Zakar. And now we gotta take it to Ganon's place, so we can get it forged and not rusty, which is what we're gonna be doing now. Of course, when we talk to this guy, who's waiting out here near the entrance, we find out that there's a bit of a problem. As you see, Ganon has gone into hiding somewhere, and nobody knows where he is. There's supposedly a secret chamber here, but nobody has been able to find it. But maybe we can. And we can't find it unless we go in. One of these two spiders holds a key, and you want to make sure you grab it before you continue on. Keys are just like the bombs. They open doors instead of blowing up rocks that block a path. Basically the same thing that the bombs do. You're just using a different item and using it in like a different kind of door. And so far, all the enemies we've met are the same as the Southwest Cave, except for that worm enemy. When you're lined up with them, he can sense you and he can basically come after you. Strike him before he strikes you. At level 4 with the hand axe, he takes two hits to kill. And now we're in this huge room, and if you didn't already notice, towards the top of the screen, there is, of course, a room that we can't access quite yet. One of the spiders here has a key, you want to get that before you go. And then once you get that key, you want to get rid of all the spiders here. As you can tell by that table, there's a there's a hidden room there. We need to get there because that's probably where, where Ganant is. And there's another chest there that contains another medicinal herb. We don't need that because we're already at full health and we already have a medicinal herb. And if we grab another one from a chest, we're going to use it anyway. After taking on some more worms and another flower, we go to the south to enter this room. New kind of spider enemy that's gray and brown takes more damage than the ones that we've met that were gray and yellow from the southwest cave. Whenever I go into this room, I equip the crack bomb and use it to get rid of all the enemies here. Definitely helps get rid of the spiders. And now we're in this huge room with a huge chasm in it. And we gain another level. We are now at level 5. And now we're going to need a thousand experience in order to get to level 6. And here's basically what you're supposed to do in this room. Fight off all the enemies and just jump into the pit anywhere in the room. You'll end up in the secret passage that I mentioned earlier. And if you talk to the two people that are here that aren't sitting on anything, you'll find out that Ganon's in a pickle as his daughter has been kidnapped by a bunch of religious fanatics. Game has some pretty dark and mature themes. Well, a little bit. And unless you save his daughter or help him in some way, you're not going to get that sword fixed. And the religious fanatics are followers of Griud. Remember that name for later, because you're going to be hearing that name quite a bit. And the guy sitting on the bed is Ganant himself. He just wants to be left alone and just drown in his self-pity. Of course, if you talk to him, you'll be able to get out of the room. That's the only way you can get out of there. Because I'm low on health and MP, I'm going to go back to Mook's cabin. I would go over there again, but there's a good chance that I might get wiped out. And if you die here, it's instantly game over. And you get kicked all the way back to the main menu after the tile screen, and you have to load your game all over again. And it's something you'll probably see yourself getting used to later in the game. I hope it doesn't come to that, but, well, it, it was for me. And now we're going through all this again. Thankfully, we are now a level stronger 
so maybe we'll be able to take care of the worms here. Well, we're still going to have to hit him in two strikes, but at least we're back at full health and MP. That's the main thing. So when I go back to that room that had the gray and brown spiders and the two worms, I can go ahead and use a crash bomb again. I actually like the spells here. All of them are useful in their own little way. It's not like Lagoon where I only use like a few of the weak ones. The downside is, as I've mentioned, probably mentioned in the first video, you don't have a lot of MP to work with in the game. And that's still true even later on in the game. So you're basically forced to not use the magic that you have until you're fighting bosses. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I like the magic spells in this game and I wish I could use them more sometimes. But as it stands, just like in Lagoon, you're gonna have to get used to basically fighting everything through basic combat. And we're approaching that room again, so here's the Crash Bomb one more time. And this time it gets rid of the worms. Alright, we are now back at the room with the ca with the giant chasm in it. I almost said cavern. Don't know why I did. We need to go back to where we were. Because you probably know that there were quite a few enemies that still remained. And I really cut it close, avoiding that hole, that small hole in the floor as I made my way over there. You're going to be jumping out across a few pits onto other platforms to get over here. But thankfully we have a key, so we can open this door. And we get these new enemies. Now thankfully we can get rid of the spider pallet swaps here rather easily with the axe in one hit, now that we're level 5. But these little things that look like upside down... I want to say... Beetles or something? I really don't know what these things are. Those things will take two hits to kill. But thankfully they move around rather linearly. Kind of like the slimes. And they're easy to take down. Just don't get too close to them. They move around kind of like the slimes and spiders. And by going up these stairs, we can open this gray treasure box and get Ganon's key. And to fight this purple flower, you strike it once, and it turns to a spore. When it lands, you want to be near it, and you want to attack it again before it fully grows back. When you do that, you'll be able to kill it in one shot, and then you can talk to this guy. This guy will tell you that this room was where Ganon used to live until something happened to his daughter. In this case, his daughter was, of course, taken away by religious fanatics. He gives you something for saving him, and that item is rather important. It's a necklace. And upon further inspection, it looks like it belongs to Ganon's daughter. So we know what we need to do here. We need to leave this room, and then go back to the chasm, but now that we have Ganonski, we can open this door here. We have a few more enemies to take care of. I like the fact you can tell which direction you're gonna go just by looking at them. Like, if the little green things are to the side, those little green eye-like things are to the side, you know they're gonna move horizontally, and if they're not, they're gonna move vertically. Anyway, we find another gray treasure chest, and when we open that, we get the metal ball. This is our first flail-type weapon. And you want to equip it immediately. There's a rather interesting weapon, the metal ball, because of something that it can do. But of course, I have to go through the equip menu like I do every single time I equip something, just to show it off. Now, if you keep holding the C button, not the C button, but the B button, for two whole rotations, nothing happens. But if you let go of it before then, the ball flies off. And it's kind of random where the ball goes, but if you're lucky, 
you can get the ball to fly towards an enemy and do some damage from a really good distance. Despite the way the weapon works, you still want to equip it for the next area. And now that you have the necklace, you can just go down that chasm and talk to Ganant. You will automatically give Ganant the necklace. By doing so, Ganant will tell you about his daughter, Fom. And he will ask you to go rescue Fom. Well, we get to do something awesome for once, and I'm not going to turn that down, so press C on yes. And not only will you be able to help him out, he'll be also be able to help you out too, because right after you accept, you'll be able to give him the rusty sword, and he can finally forge it so that it's no longer rusty. So we actually get this mission done and we get another one just like that. And then after that, you'll exit out of the secret compartment that Ganat was hiding in. And then you can leave and head back to Mook's cabin. All we need to do now is just go in and tell Moog, hey, we got the sword fixed. It's gonna, or rather, it's gonna get fixed. And then, you'll, we will tell him about the mission that we got from Ganant to rescue Ganant's daughter. As you can probably tell, Gryud is the name of a god. And you're going to hear that name pretty often in this game. Not surprisingly, because they're religious fanatics, they're going to sacrifice Fom, and that you'll have to go to Gryu's tower in order to stop them. Mook knows that what we're doing here is super serious and asks us if we're prepared. Press C on yes. And he will help us out. Up until now, we couldn't enter Gryu's Tower, even if we wanted to. And if we tried to do it now, well, we still can't. But if we talk to Mook, after we agree to rescue Ganon's daughter, he'll give us the Believer's Mark. Which will allow us entry into Gryu's Tower. And now I'm going to talk to this girl one last time, or rather one more time, in order to refill my HP and MP. And then I'm going to save the next vision for the next video. So join me next time where I go to Greed's Tower and save Fawn. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!